Okay, so now we uh, looked at this whole definition of the derivative and we said that that was a bad definition. And now we're saying that the derivative is the number c such that uh, if you change the input of f of x by a little bit, then uh, f of x plus a is approximate to f of x plus a c plus o of a, which means that uh, these terms become much smaller than a c when a approaches zero. Um, and so the function is really well approximated by f of x plus a c. And um, this C, you can think about like why it's unique. Um, it's unique sort of like the picture that we just had a little bit before. And that picture showed that pretty much this value of C is that slope of the tangent line. Um, but using this uh, definition, we can uh, get some nice identities. Uh, the sum rule, the part rule, and the chain rule. And the sum rule uh, is the easiest one. And it's also easy in the limit definition. But um, let's just uh, go over it quickly. So we have that f of x plus a is equal to f of x plus a f prime of x plus o of a, right? By definition, uh, this is the best first linear approximation, and um, these are just some higher order terms. And remember that this is just some number. We're keeping x as a uh, fixed constant. And then we're going to say that g of x plus a um, is going to be equal to g of x plus a g prime of x plus o of a. So what is this saying? This is saying that g of x, if you change the input by a little bit, same value x, then um, the value is approximately g of x plus some linear dependence on a, and that linear dependence is given by this constant, because we're treating x as a constant here, uh, times your value a. Now let's define a new function, h of x is equal to f of x plus g of x. Okay, so let's look at what h of x plus a is. Well, this is equal to f of x plus a plus g of x plus a, okay? Well, this is equal to f of x plus a f prime of x plus o of a, and this is equal to g of x plus a g prime of x plus o of a. So, um, let's rearrange these terms a little bit. This is equal to f of x plus g of x, which is just the shown in this term. We look at these two terms and we can factor out the a, right? So that's a f prime of x plus g prime of x. And then we have these two terms, which looks like o of a plus o of a. So now what do these two terms mean? Well, this is something that looks like something times x squared plus something times x cubed and so on. Sorry, uh, a squared plus a cubed and so on. And this is also something that looks like a squared plus a cubed and so on. Uh, some constants here, but that doesn't really matter. So the point is that if you add these two together, um, then that slope goes to zero faster than um, a will. So you can uh, check on your own that if you have two functions, u of a and v of a, and these are both equal to o of a. So this equality isn't like natural equality. This is just saying that um, the limit as a goes to zero of these two divided by a is zero, which means that these two go to zero faster than a. Then that implies that u of a plus v of a is also o of a. And you can verify that this is just saying that like the limit of this divided by a also goes to zero. And uh, I'll leave you to check that on your own. But this essentially means that if you have two functions which are both o of a, which means that they both go to zero faster, uh, I'll keep saying that because that's like the main idea of this, then the sum of those uh, will also go to zero faster than a. So o of a plus o of a is just some other function which is also o of a. Now, what are we saying? Well, we said that the derivative is by definition that constant where you multiply it by a and then you have some small order terms. Notice that f of x plus g of x is by definition h of x because that's what we define h of x to be. And this is just some number, right? Because f prime and g prime are just numbers. Multiplying a and then our error that we have is very small in comparison to a. So what does that mean? That means that this must be by definition h prime of x. Because it's the constant that multiplies a, so that our error term is uh, smaller than a. Um, or in like order of a. So uh, that's a fairly easy proof that um, h prime of x is equal to f prime of x plus g prime of x using this new definition. And you might think that there's not much of an advantage there because um, here looking at your loop definition, uh, the proof goes basically the exact same way. But now I'll show the exact same thing for the product rule, um, and that will be much, much nicer. 
Okay, so again, we just grabbed the sum rule, and uh, why not grab the product rule? And if you try to remember what the product rule is using this limit definition, it's a lot of weird algebraic manipulation, and you have to like add and subtract things which sort of seemingly come out of nowhere, and then you just, the limits just somehow magically come out to what you want it to be. But if you use this definition, it's almost obvious what the derivative has to be. And so the proof and the intuition behind the product rule is much, much cleaner. So here, let's do this out, h of x plus a. So here we're defining h of x as being some new function, which is f of x times g of x. Well, this is by definition f of x plus a times g of x plus a. Okay, let's write this out. This is equal to f of x plus a f prime of x plus o of a. And this is g of x plus a g prime of x plus o of a. And I'll leave you to uh, check that if you have some function u of a, which is o of a, which means that u of a dies down very slowly is a equals to zero, sorry, dies down very quickly is a equals to zero, then if you multiply u of a times some function which does not depend on a, so like f of x, or if you multiply by some function that does not depend on a and multiply by a, then both of those cases uh, will still be o of a. Um, essentially what that means is that, uh, you'll see why that's useful in a bit, but we're going to expand this out. So this is going to be equal to f of x times g of x. And then a f prime of x uh, g of x. a f prime of x g of x. And then a g prime of x f of x plus a f of x g prime of x. And then a f prime of x a g prime of x, so you can write that as a squared. So that'll be a squared f prime of x g prime of x. And here's what I said earlier comes in important, is that uh, the rest of it is O of A times something, and this is O of A times something. Both of those things are O of A, and if you have the sum of two things that are O of A, then that is O of A. So if you're not convinced, um, you can work out the details on your own. Uh, but another way to think about this is to just be like, okay, this is very well approximated by th uh, these two guys, and this is very well, well, this is very well approximated by these. This is very well approximated with these. So if you multiply them together, this product is going to be very well approximated by the product of these two by themselves. And whatever uh, remaining junk is there is going to be extremely small in comparison to A. Now, um, given that we have this, notice that this has something that looks like A squared. So A squared, and this is just some number, right? Because we're, again, we're treating X as some constant. So a squared times some number is going to be O of a, because if you take the limit, then this is a times something, and that's going to go to zero. So this term is also O of a. So this whole thing is O of a. So what is this saying? Well, this is saying that this is equal to f of x g of x plus a times what? f prime of x g of x plus g prime of x f of x plus uh, something that is O of a. Now, again, we're going to use this definition. We're going to say that um, the derivative is that constant, which you multiply by a, so that um, this function is approximately equal to the value plus a times something. So this, notice, is just h of x, again, by definition. And this over here is some constant. And this multiplies a. And the remainder term, the error term that we have from this linear approximation, is very, very small. So what that means is that this must be our derivative h prime of x. So here we derive the product in a very simple way, just by you know expanding out our products and um, yeah, sort of binomial or not binomial, yes, binomial expanding, and uh, factoring things out and noticing that we had some small error terms later on, and just based on that we find that h prime of x is equal to f prime of x g x the g of x plus g prime of x f of x, and that is the usual product rule that you come across in single variable calculus but uh, proved in a much, much nicer way. Now, we're, the next thing we're going to prove is going to be the most shocking result, is, is that we can prove, uh, using this interpretation, the chain rule, which is the most complicated proof using the limit definition. OK, so now um, we can actually use this interpretation to also derive the chain rule. And so the product rule itself uh, was a complicated derivation uh, in terms of your limit definition, 
So the chain rule is much more complicated with more terms just coming out of nowhere and then it just magically simplifies out to your end result. But here, um, it's a bit more tricky, it requires a bit more work, but it's much uh, more straightforward to see how the chain rule comes into play. So again, uh, similar to the last few proofs, uh, we have h of x is going to be some function that we want to compute the derivative of. In this case, we're going to consider the composition f of g of x. So, uh, let's see, uh, let's look at what h of x plus a is. Well, this is equal to f of g of x plus a. Now, uh, it's not exactly clear how to proceed, but there's only one thing that we can do. Well, the only thing that we know how to do is g of x plus a is equal to this. So this is equal to f of g of x plus a g prime of x plus o of a. Now, uh, we can do something that we can sort of re relabel things, right? Uh, notice that a g prime of x, if a is very small, then this is going to be very small. And o of a is going to be even smaller. Um, so what that means is that let's call this some very small number a prime, and let's call g of x some very small number y. So this is going to be equal to f of y plus a prime. But now we can use this because this has the same form, except we're just calling the variable something else. Well, this is just going to be equal to f of y plus a prime f prime of x plus o of a prime. Now, um, let's plug in our definitions back in. This is going to be equal to f of g of x, right? Because y is just uh, equal to g of x. And then f prime of x. Oh, sorry, this should be f prime of y. Right? Uh, plus f prime of y, uh, but y is g of x. So this we can rewrite as f prime of g of x. And then what is a prime? a prime is this whole thing. So this is times a g prime of x plus o of a. And then plus o of a prime, which is o of a g prime of x plus o of a. And again, uh, I will leave you as an exercise to verify using the definition of small o notation that this whole expression is also o of a. And notice that this is o of a times something. So this will also give you something that's o of a. And so finally, what we get is that this is f of g of x uh, plus f prime of g of x times g prime of x times a plus this plus that. But we know that the sum of two things that are o of a is also o of a. And so this is just something uh, o of a. So what have we gotten? We've gotten that uh, h of x plus a. Notice that this is, again, by definition, h of x. Uh, h of x plus a is approximately equal to h of x plus some constant times a plus something that is very small in comparison to a. And again, by definition, the derivative is that constant which multiplies a such that this statement is true. So that means that this must be h prime of x. And so this is kind of like, in my opinion, the first time I did this was pretty surprising, that you can use like small approximations over and over again to prove even something that's a bit more complicated like the chain rule. And here we see that h prime of x is equal to f prime of g, prime, g of x times g prime of x, which is exactly what you would expect. So in my opinion, this is like one of the, one of the big powers of this definition of the derivative is that it allows you to very easily, very conceptually see why um, these rules like the product rule and the chain rule must be true.